Welcome, everyone. In this exercise, we're going to build and understand a very common warehouse operation in FlexSim, the order picking process. This is the heart of most distribution centers and material handling stations. If you've ever wondered how to model the way warehouses efficiently pull the right products off the shelves and get them ready for customers, this is exactly what we'll be creating today. In our scenario, the warehouse rack holds 24 unique SKUs. Each SKU has its own dedicated storage slot, and the rack itself is divided into multiple sections. Every section is assigned to a single operator, meaning each operator is responsible only for their own zone. This setup is quite common in real warehouses because it helps reduce walking distance and speeds up the picking process. In front of the rack, we have a conveyor carrying totes, each tote represents a customer order. A tote has a unique box ID and can contain several SKUs, often from different rack zones. Orders come into the system from our order table, which lists all the incoming requests. Some orders are small, with just a few SKUs, while others require multiple SKUs stored in different sections. The operator's job is to pick the required SKUs from their assigned zone, place them into the tote, and send the tote forward to be packed and shipped. Now, let's start building this model in FlexSim. The first step is to prepare our input global tables. We'll create two of them. The first is the aggregate order table, which in this example contains around 1000 orders. Each order may have different quantities for each SKU. The second table is the rack plan table. Here, we divide our 24 SKUs into 6 sections, record the bay and level for each SKU. With the tables ready, we can move on to adding our 3D objects. Let's start with a rack. For this exercise, we'll use a standard rack. If you want to know more about different rack types and storage object properties, we already have separate videos you can check out. For now, we'll configure the rack to have 12 bays, 3 levels, and 1 slot per bay, with each bay 1.25 meters wide and each level 1 meter high. Next, We'll create the initial inventory for the rack at the model start time. We'll connect a source object to the rack and generate 1,500 parts at the beginning. For simplicity, we'll use a smaller version of the standard box shape, but you could add custom shapes if you like. Since we have 24 SKUs, we'll assign each item SKU label with a random value between 1 and 24 using the D-uniform distribution. From the rack plan table, we'll also copy over other labels, such as SKU, bay number, level, and section. With the labels in place, we'll set the rack slot assignment strategy to by bay, level, slot ID and adjust the label values accordingly. Running the model now should show the rack filled correctly with the initial stock. To make it easier to track inventory, we'll create a global list.
On the racks on entry trigger, we'll push each item into this list and assign a partition ID equal to its SKU. This gives us an easy reference point for pulling items from the rack later. Next, we'll add a conveyor in front of the rack and place decision points for each section along the conveyor. By adjusting their distance along values, we can position them evenly. Each decision point will have an operator assigned, and we'll link them with an S connection for easy reference in our logic. Also we can store the decision point, DP, reference for the section into the rack plan table by adding a new column. This DP reference will make our picking logic much easier to handle later on. For generating orders, we'll use a queue to create empty totes, which will travel along the conveyor. Similarly, for item replenishment, or transferring stock from inbound to the rack when inventory levels drop below a threshold, we can add another queue, sync, and operator. For a more flexible approach, we can store this threshold value as a parameter. It's not strictly necessary to do so, you could also hard code it or store it as a global variable or in a global table. All right. That's the end of part 1 of our order picking process exercise. In the next video, we'll jump into the logic building, working with map variables, using pull from list, building with object process flow, and a lot more to make the process fully functional. Don't miss it, stay tuned, and I'll see you in part 2. Happy simulating!